In this video, we want to consider how we can adjust our Schmidt trigger circuits by applying some reference voltage. And so why do we even want to apply this reference voltage? Well, so to understand that, let's look at this hysteresis curve that we had from our most recent video. And so what we can see from this hysteresis curve for our non-inverting Schmidt trigger circuit is we talked about how we can adjust the width of this box or our hysteresis width by adjusting R1 and R2. So we could expand our box to make it wider, thereby increasing our hysteresis width, or we could also decrease the width of this box. So we could decrease our hysteresis width, and all of that just by changing values of R1 and R2. But we said, what if we wanna shift this whole thing? So what if we wanna take this whole box and shift it to the right? Or maybe we wanna shift this whole thing to the left. And so that's what we're gonna look at how we can do now. And so of course we can mention as well if we wanted to shift this up or down of course we can just adjust our vh and our vl and so our vh and our vl are directly related to our bias voltages that are biasing our op amp that v plus and v minus that we often don't explicitly write okay so before we talk about that we wanted to find something called our switching voltage so our switching voltage for our schmidt trigger is defined as the average of our upper and lower thresholds. So our switching voltage is defined as the average of our VTH and VTL. So what we can see from these examples that we have considered in our previous videos for our basic configurations is that in both of these cases, our switching voltage was right here at zero. So we had Vs equals zero. So we can go ahead and define based on this, our switching voltage Vs, and based on this definition I have written right here, we can say this is equal to VTL plus VTH over two. And so that's just writing that it's the average of those two values. Okay, so now we want to see, well, how do we shift that? So, of course, shifting this whole box either to the right or to the left is the same thing as moving the switching voltage to either a more positive value in this case or a more negative value in this case. So let's take a look at how we would do that by adding a reference voltage. So we're going to look at both of our configurations. We're going to start by looking at our inverting configuration with that reference voltage V ref. And so essentially all we're going to do, we're gonna have the same configuration we did before, but we're just gonna replace our ground with our reference voltage. So if we're looking at our inverting configuration, we had our input on our inverting terminal. So we have VI here, and then we have here is, it was previously our ground, but we're gonna call this V ref now. And then we have our positive feedback, which is connecting our output voltage to our non-inverting terminal via resistor R2. So this is what our configuration would look like. Um, one thing to note in the textbook, if you look in Neiman, you'll see that they have a resistor here, uh, which is equal to a value of R1 parallel R2. Um, so best I can tell, that's just to match our input resistance at our two input terminals. Um, but I don't think it's critical to have in there for our purposes. Okay, so what we can do then with this configuration is we're not going to go through all the details we did with deriving our basic configuration, but we can say if we assume that our low and high voltages are symmetrical about zero, or in other words, that their magnitudes are the same, then we can say that our switching voltage is equal to R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times V ref. So that would be the equation for our switching voltage with this inverting configuration. And notice we said really the main change here is we previously had a ground and now it's V ref. Well, we can double check to make sure this equation makes sense by plugging in a zero for V ref. And of course, then we get switching voltage of zero, which is what we had seen in our previous video for our inverting configuration. That, that uh, box for our hysteresis was centered horizontally on zero. Okay, so how would we then calculate our 
upper and lower thresholds. Well, let's go ahead and draw this graphically and that'll help us to see this, I think. So let's draw over here, switch back to a pen. So we have our output and our input, VI. And so in this case, let's say we had a positive VREF. So I'm gonna draw this again for a VREF greater than zero. And so if VREF is greater than zero, we can see from that boxed equation above, that means that our switching voltage is also greater than zero. So maybe we have a switching voltage over here of VS. So now to either side of that, we're going to have our upper and lower thresholds. So on the left, we'll have our lower threshold and on the right, our upper threshold. And because our VS is also the average, so we've written that up here because VS is also the average, we know that that VS is going to be right in the middle of the two. Um, so of course we have our V high and our V low, which for this VS equation that you can still see on the screen, we assume those are, are symmetrical about zero. And so what we can do then is we can draw our two curves like we've done in the past. So we can say we have our, for our inverting configuration, if it's high, it's going to transition to low here. And if we are starting from a high VN, it's going to transition once we get to VTL. So we have something that looks like that. Um, so there are directions in the, it, so we can put our directions with arrows here. If we wanna do that, throw some blue arrows on. So we have something that looks like that. Okay, so what we can see then is that we're gonna use the same equations that we used for VTH and VTL before. We just have to add this VS term because we've just shifted it to the right VS. And of course, the same applies if we had shifted it to the left, it's just VS is going to be a negative value. So we could say our VTH is equal to R1 over R1 plus R2 times VH. So this is what we had previously for this configuration. And now all we have to do is just add VS to that. So we've just shifted that to the right for this case for a positive VS, but as you can see, if VS was negative, we'd be shifting it in the other direction. Same thing for our lower threshold. We say V low VTL, let me write that to be consistent, VTL is equal to and then we have the same R1 over R1 plus R2 times VL that we had previously, and now we just add VS to that. And so we can also think of it, we notice that these two quantities are the same because we're assuming that we have symmetric VL and VH. And so our VH, for instance, might be positive five, that would mean our VL is negative five. And so since they're multiplied by that same ratio of resistors, we're going equal directions to the left and to the right of VS. Now you can see if we had non-symmetric VH and VL, so maybe our VH is five and our VL is negative two, what that's going to lead to is this equation up here about VS being the average will no longer be true and we'll have our VS closer to one of the other thresholds. But again, we're not gonna get into too many details about that for this class. Okay, so now real briefly, we wanna also look at our non-inverting configuration with a VREF. So now non-inverting with VREF. And so we're gonna see it's essentially the same thing. We have the same basic configuration. We're just going to replace our ground, what we previously had as a ground in our previous configuration with a reference voltage VREF. So we have our output over here, and now we had our inverting terminal grounded. Well, now that is going to be VREF. And so same note about if you're following in the textbook, there's a resistor of R1 parallel R2 here, um, but we're not too worried about that, so I've just left it off in this case. Um, here we have our input connected through resistor R1, and we have feedback resistor R2, which is connecting our non-inverting input to our output. And so again, we can sort of make things simpler by assuming that our VL and VH are symmetric about zero, 
So again, for instance, if we have positive 2 for VH, we have negative 2 for VL. And what that would give us then is that our switching voltage, Vs, is equal to 1 plus R2, sorry, R1, divided by R2 times V ref. And so again, sort of as a sanity check, if we wanted, we could plug in a, a zero value for V ref. And of course, it's pretty easy to see that that would give us a zero switching voltage like we had when we had that inverting terminal grounded. So again, let's just label this clearly. This is our switching voltage. And so again, if this is in the middle, uh, what we're going to look, what this is going to look like if we assume that we have a positive reference voltage, that means that we're going to have a positive switching voltage and we can draw our hysteresis loop here. So we have our input and our output with some positive switching voltage. So now if our, our VL and VH are symmetric, that means that VS is going to be the average of the two. So we're going to have VTL and VTH. And so for our non-inverting, what we'll see, and so I've forgotten to label my V high and V low. So of course we have V high and V low. So what we're going to see in this case is we are going in this direction. And then once we get to that upper threshold, we, tr we transition to high. And if we're going in the other direction, let me put some arrows here. And if we're going in the other direction, we stay high until we hit that lower transition, that lower threshold, and then we transition low. And so of course you can see the only difference between this and the curve we looked at for our previous non-inverting configuration is that that hysteresis loop has been shifted to the right by an amount Vs. So again, since we're assuming that our VL and VH are symmetric about zero, for that case, we can write that our new high threshold is just equal to Vs minus R1 over R2 times VL. And so notice because VL is a negative number, we're actually adding a value to Vs. And similarly for VTL, our lower threshold, we can say that's Vs minus R1 over R2 times VH. And so again, VH is a positive number. So here we are subtracting a positive number from Vs. So that's moving to the left. And so just like with our non-inverting with a reference configuration, we see that if our VL and VH are not symmetric about the origin, um, we are not necessarily going to have this Vs as the average of the two, but we'll see it sort of skewed towards one side or the other. So hopefully that makes sense, but if you have any questions about these different configurations, please don't hesitate to let me know.